Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Figure Study, where we appreciate the form in Transformers. And today I'm doing something a little different again. Uh, this is breaking from the norm and my own rules that I've set for myself because... Uh, okay, so first off, this is Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon. And the reason this is breaking rules is because he is covered in repro labels. You can see lots of different stickers all over him. Now, I really want to avoid doing these videos on figures that have been enhanced after the fact because, you know, it's not really, it's meant to be a comment on the original piece, not the, you know, what it is after it's been tweaked and upgraded, which is why I generally don't put the upgrade kit videos in with the figure study videos. But this is a little bit different. It's not so much an official figure study on one character. It's more of a just me ranting about the importance of color choice and just how much of a difference this kind of stuff can make. Because, you know, here we have Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon. And he is actually a very nice looking tank. It's unfortunate that he's covered in the stickers because, again, I I bought him uh, pre-owned. He's in good shape. He's in really good shape. It's just... I, there was no indication that he was covered in repro labels, so I didn't realize that, you know, he was going to be covered in repro labels. So I got him, and now I've got Bludgeon covered in repro labels, which, you know, aside from one or two things is fine. It's just, I really wish that I didn't have these on here for when I did this video. But anyway, uh, just looking at the overall molded details, like there's a lot of really nice molding in here. A lot of just really, really nice little details. And most of the, uh, <laughs> most of the stuff that's not orange, black, or green is a sticker. It's like these here actually are meant to cover up these uh, little gray bits that actually stick through. And these cover up some, no wait, are those stickers? No, those aren't stickers, Never mind. But yeah, um, I mean, it looks good. Like, the actual shape is really nice. You know, he's got that floppy plastic end for the barrel here, which stinks, and floppy plastic for this gun. But, uh, you know, the overall shape of everything is really nice. It's a nice little molded hatch there. It's a little antenna thing. Venting, I'm assuming, is what that is. And it's like a slightly, almost, but not quite metallic green, just kind of adding a little bit of extra shade to it there. And yeah, he's he's good. There's like also some there's even molding in areas that are normally covered up by the tank turret, which is nice. Then the treads, which have the same problem as GDO Megatron, only kind of in reverse, where you've got the bright orange wheels back here going into the black, and then like one black and one gray. So it just kind of, it breaks that up and looks kind of gaudy, but eh, whatever. Yeah, it's a nicely done tank. The overall use of color is good. I, you know, the orange is a little bright, but I honestly don't mind it. It looks, it looks good. I really like this darker green though. The darker green, the lighter gray, and this like a little bit of a brown that only seems to be used on the uh, on the missile pod things there, and then it kind of carries over in the stickers here. But those again aren't official. So yeah, it's a good looking tank. Contrast that with this thing, which you all probably remember because it hasn't been that long. And it's, I mean, just, you know, it's no contest. Labels are no. This looks so much better than this. This looks like a, like somebody left it in a school and some kids went nuts on it with a highlighter. This actually looks like a nice little military tank. I just don't, do not care for this color scheme at all. And you can tell, again, even without the labels, just how much of a difference that color can make. Like, because this is a darker green, you can actually make out the, the molded details a lot better at a distance. Whereas with this one, they all kind of get washed out, except for like the incredibly deep, obvious molded details. 
This one has the super ugly Decepticon symbol in the front. This one does not. It actually has just a couple of stickers on the side, which works just fine for me. And yeah, it's just the the differences between these two mold-wise are completely non-existent. But I just hate this color scheme. This color scheme works so much better. And yes, a lot of it comes down to personal preference, and this is an homage to G2 Megatron, but honestly, this just looks so much nicer. Like, the colors actually work together. Even, again, though the orange is a little bit bright, it still works much better with this green than this green works with anything. Just anything. This, ugh. Get him out of here. So, yeah. I mean, just even in tank mode, the color does make a huge difference. It's it just it looks so much nicer, and also <laughs> it also carries over into robot mode, which we'll see in a second. And now Bludgeon in his robot mode, and while I complained incessantly about the scrawniness and the colors and the non-fittingness of Megatron, this looks really good. This is really, really awesome, and, you know, yeah, labels, can't do anything about that, but, I mean, just ignoring the fact that you've got these added details here, and these would just normally be orange, he looks so much better. Just the overall color, the orange and the green works a lot better here, and it all, like, this, the scrawniness works better for someone who's not Megatron, and it's just, like, I've didn't say this before because I wanted to wait for talking to Bludgeon, but like the actual detail of this figure is fantastic. Like just the way that the tank folds around and becomes like samurai armor is great. The funky little two-toed bird feet don't bother me at all because they belong to a character that doesn't really have as iconic a form. <laughs> like he's got a couple of different iterations, but he doesn't have like, you know, Megatron's obviousness and of course his face I think it just fits a lot better like he's got that skull which almost kind of matches the little skull looking thing on his chest and it just it fits so much better with the look of the rest of this than the uh than that ridiculous bucket head on Megatron speaking of I mean, I mean, come on. The actual figure itself in both cases, very nice. But just that head stands out so much, not just for the shape, but for the color. This fits so much better. This color arrangement works so much better. This one is hideous. There's actually a little bit more detail here, not even, you know, ignoring the labels. You've got like the orange bits on the shins, whereas these are just gray. And it's, it just looks so much better. It's also nice how, whereas with Megatron here, his swords are the same exact purple as the other purple here, Bludgeon's swords are actually this gray, which s helps them stand out a lot more when they're sheathed, or even in his hands, because, you know, there isn't that much gray on his robot mode. There is a lot of that purple on Megatron's robot mode, though. It is just such an improvement. And I know he technically came, like, he came after, but this is so much better than this. Just the, the, the darker tones, the less clashy colors. It's like, they're the same figure, but I love this one so much more. And I actually kind of despise this one at this point. I just, ugh, they're so... This is why color is important. And... I completely acknowledge that my take on what looks good and what looks bad is my own take. It's not, a, it's not you know, it's not the be-all and end-all. There are going to be people who think that this looks awesome, and that is fine. That is absolutely fine. But what I'm, but the point I'm trying to make is, like, there are going to be people who think this looks infinitely better than this. And that just goes to show, again, how much of a difference color can make. Because, again, they're both the same figure. 
but the colors are what make all the difference. Well, the colors in the head. But yeah, it's it's so interesting to me just how much difference a simple paint job can make because I have been so sick of looking at that Megatron and when I saw that Bludgeon was available, even though he was used, I was just like, yes, because Bludgeon looks so much better. <laughs> And it's just the color and the head. That's the only difference. But it really does make that much of a difference. It's kind of miraculous. <laughs> now, uh, one other thing I was going to say is uh, the thing that really bugs me about the repro labels more than the fact that I am you know, can't really do an official figure study on this guy because he's covered in them is repro labels on the sword, which you can see even though, like, I don't know how long these have been on here, but they're, they're peeling they're not looking great. There's this bit here, which keeps wanting to flop up. Like right, right here, this just wants to come up on its own without much coaxing. And it's just a pain. I don't dislike the idea of making the sword silver, but this is something that's going to require an upgrade kit, I think. Because those silver stickers are not great. They actually make it a tighter fit into the sheath, too. But yeah, he's he just looks so fantastic. And there's a lot of little details in here that are really cool. I love how the tank treads kind of become like little armor bits. And you can you can't really do them that well on Bludgeon, actually, for some reason. But on Megatron, you can fold these up. And I actually kind of prefer leaving them out, having them longer. I like seeing them stick out from underneath these skirt pieces. And I like them hanging down more over the arms. Yeah, he's he's cool. I mean, he's he's got a jack o' lantern chest. He's he's pumpkin colors basically, but he's he is very cool, with or without these labels. And I just am so glad I got him to replace this thing because because dang, just dang. Anyway, that has been my rant about the uh, importance of color choice, which, you know, I'm not saying that Hasbro Takara is doing it wrong by doing this. They're, you know, they're not appealing to me, certainly, but it's just that it, in a way it's almost like a case for repaints because if a figure comes out and it looks cool and you want it, but you don't like the color scheme, then it gives you a reason to want it if it comes out in another color because sometimes color can make a huge difference because, I mean, just personal preferences aside, just look at the contrast between these two. They look completely different even though they're exactly the same except for the head. I mean, physically exactly the same except for the head. But anyway, yeah, that, that's been my rant. Thank you for watching, and I hope that if nothing else, you uh, can kind of further appreciate the importance that a paint job can make. That's why a lot of people do custom work, I'm assuming. So thank you for watching. As per usual, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Any combination of those three would make me a happy Rob. And uh, I will catch you next time with something that I'm a bit more interested in talking about. <laughs> thank you.